Good morning and welcome to those of you in the sanctuary, those of you on Zoom, those of you on Facebook Live, those of you listening in later on to a recording. You are welcome with us as we worship on Parkway's Recommitment Sunday. We pause to acknowledge as we worship on this ground, we worship on ground unseated, ground that uh, has been the home of the Saponi, Tupelo, Cherok, Catawba, Lumbee, and others. So we worship longing for conciliation, for equity and justice. Whoever you are, wherever you are along life's journey, you're welcome with us at Parkway United Church of Christ. Our opening prayer is offered by Andrea. Please join me in the opening prayer. O oh God, our hope in ages past, in present trouble, and in time still before us, we come in gratitude. We respond to your abundance with acts of love, commitment, and joy. We respond by binding ourselves in community one to another because we are clear we cannot go it alone as your children. Amen. Hear the opening song from the pickup choir. such a surreal feeling for us to be here with you present in the flesh in the sanctuary of Parkway United Church of Christ. It's um, an amazing feeling. This song is listed as a hymn of consecration in the UCC hymnal. I call upon you today to receive it as a hymn of rededication. The text of this hymn is at least 1,300 years old and it spans the gamut of human emotion, um, and it's one that's always been meaningful to me, so um, I'm thankful for the small version of the Parkway Pickup Choir, and hope in the future we'll be able to add back more and more of the singers and players, so be now my vision.
ruler, companion, energy, <clears throat> lover, be with us all in all ways. At this time, uh, we will share celebrations and prayer concerns. Uh, uh, shortly, I will invite those in the sanctuary to share briefly. And um, at this time, those of you on Zoom, I encourage you to add to the chat what it is that you have on your hearts. I've got a few. Leslie H. is uh, asking for prayers as she prepares for uh, repair of her heart this coming, these coming days. I just got word that uh, Susan uh, D. is uh, back in the hospital in the emergency room right now. And so we hold Susan and, and Dorsey in our prayers. We had a memorial service here yesterday afternoon for Charlie Nystrom. So we are holding particularly in our tenderness Shirley and the entire family, all of those who have known Charlie. And the, uh, the flowers here in our chancel area are from that service. We continue to hold in our thoughts uh, Vicki S as she continues to recover Cynthia D, who has been traveling back and forth a couple of times a month to New Orleans to worship, I mean to, to work. Jeremy D, as he continues to explore living arrangements. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, those of you, although all of us who are experiencing um, tests or waiting for test results or are in, engaged in uh, medical treatment right now, Karen R. D., uh, her father, uh, Reverend Richardson, passed away uh, a couple of days ago, so we hold that family in our prayers. Uh, we've got um, Carol asking for keeping Rita W. in prayer. Beth Jackson, uh, celebration, certain knee is feeling better. How about those of you here in the sanctuary, what do you lift up today? For Diane J. Uh, having eye surgery tomorrow. For Curtis and Tyler. For Curtis and Tyler. For children who cannot read. For children not able to read. Refugees around the world, yes. Others. Let's pause for just a moment of silence as we absorb these, as we share with the sacred presence things that are on our hearts as we move to the prayer Jesus taught in the language and tradition of your choosing. We pray together. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Anna T. is uh, also celebrating her mother's birthday tomorrow and her legacy of generosity. I invite those of you on Zoom to go ahead and unmute and share words of peace with one another. Those of you in the sanctuary to, to safely offer gestures of, of the peace of Christ. Peace be with all of you. Peace. 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 Peace
Anna. Hey, Francie. Hey, Peggy. Hey, Peggy. Hey, Pat. Shall. Hi. Hey. Hi, Pat. Hi, Carol. Hi, 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 of three wise generations of women. And thank you for this morning. Yes. Hi, Francie Hi. and Mackie. We got amazing chairs. We think about Christ. Anna, that, that's, a, that's a great shade of red on you, Anna. Oh, thank you, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie, I'm going to keep you in prayer. Thank you. I feel the yeah. prayer. What, what day? What day? Uh, two more days. Tuesday two more days. Tuesday. Wednesday. No, Tuesday. At Tuesday. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Light of and my sister's coming. Really <laughs> Good. What a joy it is to be back in the sanctuary and to see one another. <laughs> If you would, please make your way back to your seats. Those of you on Zoom, please go ahead and mute yourselves again. And ready yourselves for the reading of Ephesians chapter 2, verses 17 through 22. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father, Mother. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ, Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I'm Joni, and I've asked Lisa to join me this morning in this song. This is a song that was in our church hymnal growing up and was special to me. And it's a uh, it says it's an ancient Indian melody uh, that was adapted back in 1901. Art and my possessions, Lord, I offer unto Heart and mind, spirit and body, we come to thee. Receive us, all of us, O merciful one. I have to be really honest. 
I don't really know what church is right now. We've been through an alchemical shifting through these last 20 months, and, and it wasn't just since the pandemic. It was before then, this kind of like upending of, of what we've come to know as communities of faith. And it's not really going to end anytime soon, is it? I don't say that with any kind of way or lament. It's just, I'm just trying to be really honest right now about where I am, at least, as a person who's always been a part of the church. We're at a time that we're being, if we're willing to go there, to be opened up. We don't have very many answers. I feel the Spirit kneading the, the yeast, the leaven, into us. And it's important for us to watch and to listen, to keep telling each other stories of where we kind of see an, a newness, a hopefulness, about what it is to be the church, not just now, but moving forward. Because what we've come to know is that a lot of the old answers, they just don't work. They simply are no longer relevant. I really accept the fact that it's pretty hard to make a commitment to a church these days. It's hard to claim Christian. And frankly, nobody here is asking you to. But to make some kind of commitment, some kind of investment, it takes fortitude, it takes even stubbornness to stick with an imagination. There's something about bonding with, with a group of people in a way that we can still know and act upon sacred compassion. It's easy these days to say, why not? And yet some of you continue to say yes. And that yes doesn't look the same for everybody. In fact, delightfully, there is a robust diversity in, in what that looks like. And we get to make, what, make out what it means without a creed or an order or an intellectual assent to a certain thing that forces us into a box. Yes, there are important touchstones for right relationship the right way to be with one another, and it continues to evolve based on our experience together, our conversation with one another, and our attention prayerfully to the Holy Spirit. Because we're so uncertain of the answers right now, I invite us to abide in softness, in pliability, in responding to one another's yes. A yes, not so much to a place or an institution or a past or a denomination or even our own haunting hurt of religiosity, but to a collection of relationships we decide we're going to throw our lot in with because somehow we still believe sacred becomes real in the midst of that stick to with each other. Ephesians, which uh, Andrea just read, getting some feedback here, is a book not written to a particular community, but it's sort of a circular, calling forth a, a vision of the universal church. It's a vision of uniting old and new, different cultures and spiritualities, heaven and earth. And, you know, it's interesting, the writer throws in a whole bunch of different images for the church, all in two sentences. Community of citizens, household, building, temple. But, you know, if you look at the Greek, there's something fascinating about all of those different images. They hold one thing in common. Each one of them has this root, oikos in it. Home making. Home making as a community with God. 
All of them point not just to comfort in that home, but an alternative vision of economy, ecology, ecumenical relationships. And it's a radical departure of the forces of homelessness and nobodiness. A place of meaning. A place where each of us matters. And it's almost tongue-in-cheek, I think, the, the image of the physical structure that is used as the metaphor. Can you, can you hear me okay? Because the dwelling place is not of stone or wood or stucco. It's spirit indwelling between us, among us, beyond us, within us, and with all of creation. It talks about cornerstone. I'd like to translate cornerstone as pattern as the thing that sets how we are going to be in community with each other. Maybe it's the image of the double helix, you know, that paradox, the pattern that uh, is uh, releasing to receive something new, broken yet whole, offering space yet intimacy, feminine and masculine, Structure and fluidity that's repeated in every witness, calling us to our full humanity. The image that comes to me right now for this congregation is a different one. It's rhizome. You know, that which sends out shoots underneath the ground and then suddenly pops up here and pops up over here and flourishes, blossoms. It's all connected to each other, but it's happening in all kinds of different places. Or maybe even better, uh, looking at the islands out in our parking lot, maybe it's strawberry stolons that like uh, scatter across the top of the earth and create this webbing, this webbing of interconnection. And they sometimes cascade over stone and, and pavement. And sometimes they even have enough oomph to fruit into this glorious red sweetness. The church has to be portable and multilocational and pliable, stolen like, putting down roots quickly in new environment, environs. We are no longer going to church. We live church. Amen. We live determined to be free from the endless cycle of projecting our own pain out somewhere else or being trapped inside of it. We commune together in heart-shaped berries of life. So I've been, we've been listening some. We've had lots of conversations as a congregation over these last many months. I've been trying to pay attention. What is it that you celebrate? And some of you have actually written it out on your commitment forms uh, to be turned in. You value and you celebrate small groups. Many of them are still happening virtually for support from, for each other, but also really wrestling with tough issues together to find openings, expanding the periphery of our vision, yet somehow connected to, to worship and a congregation as a whole. So it's your opportunity to invite others to women's groups, to the men's group, to the contemplative prayer group, to the white fragility group, to the new group talking about practices around racialized trauma, to the environmental group, to the broad-based organizing group, to the Bible study group, to the drawdown group, and there's even more. That's where our invitation to new life as a church will be for some people, even if they never come to worship. I also hear you talking about the opportunities that we are trying to create together to dig in around equity, anti-racism, climate grief, 
calling one another in to the tender, challenging work of being uncomfortable so that we can grow and actually be in solidarity with others. I hear you celebrating our regular connecting with the earth community to receive their wisdom. You know, we're a community that's increasingly receiving the grist of revelation. Yes, yeah, still from the Holy Scripture, but also the Scripture of tree and stream and perennial and leaves falling. And the sacred text of the stories embedded in our bodies, our families, and the civic and natural histories of our place the pain as well as the identity shaping realities of those stories. And then we're a community wrestling with the physical structure because this is a container that is still very important to us and we're wrestling having conversations about how this will be used for mercy and healing for those who are not coming here for worship. So who is Parkway United Church of Christ in some unique ways these days? One, a church with evocative groups, mostly online, whose discussion will sometimes hit you between the eyes and spin you around and help you to see your own soul making in a fresh way. Secondly, a space for wild worship. Worship not just outside sometimes, but worship with the natural environments, growing more and more humble as subjects among other wise subjects. You know, there's a great movement across the country and the world right now about wild churches, you know, where people worship together outside and have ritual out with the environments. But most of them, you know what? They've given up on any degree of the institutional church. Well, this congregation is staying tied to the umbilical cord of the tradition and still going and being with and, and trying to do that together. We are now decolonizing disciples aware of the sickness of our hearts and souls so that we can work for our own freedom alongside those who will self-direct their liberation. This church is a bunch taking seriously the spiritual work of eldering, of saging, in deep connection with other generations, and using the inherent knowledge and resources and social capital and privilege of our generations to act for justice and repair. So don't commit to this congregation to solve a problem or to save us from ourselves. Don't commit because we're somehow the good and the right over somebody else. Don't commit because you simply always have. Don't become, come to us and commit because you need answers from us. But commit because you want to be part of a heady, sometimes exasperating, quirky, eclectic bunch who's willing to do the dog word down, dog word, downward dog with the questions. <laughs> a bunch who needs acts with one another of affirmation and care, but not just that, of challenge and stretch and companionship. Commit because you trust somehow that in the laughter and the mess, you will be touched in your soul and it will expand and change. And in that changing, there will be a shift in the world. I'm not really sure what church is right now, but we're gonna keep trying to figure that out together. Thanks be to God for your commitment. So I invite uh, a response. Say aloud in 
complete the sentence, one sentence, just one sentence. I commit because. And those of you on Zoom, you can do that in the chat. Those of you here, you can say it aloud. I commit because. Because I love Jesus is the response. Because of the unconditional love. I commit because this is my family, my home. Because it's my family, my home. I commit because the Spirit has brought me here. Because the Spirit has brought me here. Because I love this community. I commit because of the simple things we're drawn back to in faith. Because of the simple things we're drawn back to in faith. I commit because we can be ourselves. Because we can be ourselves. I commit because this church is welcoming. Because this church is welcoming. Because of the image of the rhizome. <laughs> because I be, continue to be challenged to grow and stretch. Uh, one, uh, Beth on Zoom says, because I can be my real self here. Any others? I commit because this community accepted me and loves me more so. Because this community accepts me and loves me warts and all. Acceptance and love from the start, including people like Nan. Anna says, um, I commit because this is my tribe where I can be part of something bigger, led by spirit. Carol says, I commit because of my faith. Another Carol says, God's love grows stronger and warmer in community. I'll hold this space open for another couple of beats. Anybody else? I commit because of my faith that I have in the of life this morning and uh, also to remain humble. Because of lifelong faith and to remain humble. I'm going to call forward um, Diane and Larry, Karen, and Tim for our ritual of new members. It's so exciting to be able to do this in the sanctuary. And I'll stay here so people can hear me. Larry and Diane have found a sense of spiritual community in our midst here at Parkway. They have discerned in the spirit that it is time to affirm their baptism and be in relationship with us here in this local congregation. So I ask the two of you, in accordance with the sacred story we claim, do you seek to continue to love God with all your heart, soul, capacity, and to love your neighbor as yourself? If so, say, I do. Do you commit yourself to this community to share in joy and sorrow, to work together for spiritual growth 
for love, for justice, and for peace? If so, say, I do. I invite all of you, if you're able, to share with me in our commitment to Diane and Larry. We praise you for calling us together as the church. We are grateful for those who gather to make up this local church and for calling us into covenant with Diane and Larry. Together may we live in the spirit, building one another up in love and sharing in worship and service. Amen. We are delighted to have you in our midst. I'm going to invite the Bankleys to, to introduce you. And, and grab, a, grab the mic. Oh, okay. Just stand behind it, actually, okay. because we need both mics. Or Yeah, bring them forward. Many of you know that um, Diane and Larry made their way into this church prior to COVID, and then we all disappeared to the screen soon afterwards. But when they were coming, I noticed they would come, and then they were gone, and then they would come again, only to find out that um, they had just recently moved back into this area and um, were looking for churches and did it with their whole heart and soul. And I'm so glad they chose us. <laughs> but uh, Larry and Diane lived, well, they, they grew up in North Carolina, in Greensboro for Diane and Smithfield for Larry. And they both, they met at NC State and according to Larry, it is the only university, as you know, in North Carolina. So all you other universities, I know you're not real happy with that statement. Anyway, they lived in Salt Lake City for 32 years. Is that right, 32 years? Um, attending a UCC church. Holiday, H-O-L-L-A-D-A-Y, U-C-C. -C. And they were very active in that church. They raised their children there and were active with all their activities and their own, uh, their own involvement. And um, then they came to thinking about downsizing and they decided at that point, maybe we should move back to North Carolina where they're closer. Uh, to some family and uh, Diane's sister lives in High Point and uh, Larry has a sister in Georgia so the East Coast was calling them and now um, they decided they live in High Point now. Um, they have a son John and John and his husband live in Las Vegas and they have a daughter Heather and um, she and her spouse have uh, three children, which are their grandchildren. They're 8, 11, and 15. And they, <clears throat> and they live in Charlotte, I think. Is that right? Your daughter. Colorado. Colorado. Colorado, <laughs> Charlotte. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oh, yeah, you wish. <laughs> See, yeah, the, phonetic thing really is confusing. <laughs> um, since they got here, they dove right in and became a part of what was going on at Parkway. And in the two years and a few months, I think I recall meeting you two in the late spring, early summer of 2019. And even then, um, Larry exhibited a very interesting um, curiosity that was appealing to me. I remember one of the first things we talked about was a tree outside the fellowship hall and he asked me what kind of tree it was. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't know. And I still don't know. <laughs> but that was the kind of mind he had. Since they've been here, Diane has been a part of the choir. As you know, she was part of this ensemble this morning. She's on the nurture team. She has sung along with Larry um, at our worship services on the Christmas tree walk last year. He has written songs that have been performed here for our worship services. She's also involved in the, the women's groups and part of the Thursday morning spiritual reading group, uh, which is open to all of you, by the way. <laughs> she loves to read 
walk and play with her cats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who are 18 and 19. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Larry has been a part of the men's group and he is actually more faithful to it than I am. Mm -hmm. um, he likes computers too. He likes doing things like building spreadsheets. <laughs> so those of you who are record keeping, I'm thinking finance. <laughs> he may be here at Huckleberry. <laughs> he loves to watch sports on television. He hangs out on eBay a lot looking for electric guitars and he finds them and rehabilitates them. Um, he cares about how things work too. And he said to me, um, I want to be smarter when I go to bed at night than I was when I got up in the morning. Mm -hmm. That was very, very revealing to me about Larry. He's also comfortable talking in front of people and that's appealing to me as well. <laughs> Um, they have, before COVID, enjoyed going to the movies. What a bizarre concept, huh? <laughs> Traveling and singing in spaces with lots of other people. Mm -hmm. um, I ask the question, what is it about Parkway that is appealing to you? Um, one of the answers was Craig Shout, mm -hmm. whom they value deeply. The music. They came from a rich music tradition at Holiday UCC. Larry was part of a band there that played regularly. They had two services. But he kept hearing from people that Parkway had its own special brand of music. And when he came and heard it, it was appealing. And Diane found a place in the choir family. And so we we're so glad that they, uh, even though we didn't have a regular band, um, we're willing to come here and be a part of our music. Um, I guess I could tell you what Larry told me UCC actually stands for. He <laughs> said, I'm not sure if it's the United Church of Cats or the United Church of Chaos. <laughs> but as a three plus decade insider, he has a right to say that. He's seen that played out again and again. Mm -hmm. And finally, why are you here? Larry said simply, there is a passion here, and I love passion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we introduce to you Larry and Diane Stallings. <laughs> Thank you, Karen and Tim. And we extend, if you will, the right elbow of community. <laughs> Thank you. So to our ritual of recommitment, and just an invitation, if you've not had an opportunity to make a commitment, whatever that may be. We still have forms, or just send us an email, or have a conversation with us. Let's pray. When we pause intimate mystery, at least once in a while, we notice the possibilities and the resources of love in the gap between our taking something in and our response. So lavish us with your cheering attention so we might take a few moments to notice what shows up in that gap, especially as it relates to one another as church community. So many of you have uh, written on these uh, river stones that have been sitting out in front of the church building entrance. There are things like community, acceptance, hope, come and see, wisdom, love. What are some of the others? One says smile, another says gratitude. So I'll offer a prayer here and then I will pour water 
representing our baptismal identities. Christ, you hear, see, sense the details of community and hope which draw us together. And we seek to count on your, on the glue of your love to hold us as one, to allow us to cohere in a meaningful witness to mercy and justice. So we'll pour the gift of water onto smooth stones, sign of baptism, renewal, and refreshment. In the gurgle and the spray of the water, we dedicate our energy and prayers to the work of your people in this place. Let the people say, Amen. I promise you this will be brief. In the Aran Islands, there are, there are walls that have existed for a thousand years. And this is a place in northern Scotland, out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean in the North Sea, where the winds are incredibly fierce and cold and the waves crash up against the shore like sharks. And these walls are made of little pieces of limestone that are no good, no good to anyone for anything. You can't build a wall from it, of course you can. You couldn't build a building, you couldn't build a house, but these little cast off pieces of stone when they are fit together in just a certain way so that the weight of one holds down the weight of the other. And the gaps in them allow the wind and the rain to sing through them and hold them up, each of them, so that they're strong enough to withstand the butt of a goat or the pleat of a lamb or a herd and the beautiful moss that grows in the middle of all of it because they are so steady and steadfast holds them all together. So we are those cast off stones. Aside from our union with each other, we are a pile of rubble. <laughs> we are individual and uncollectively not existent, but when we amass ourselves in our brokenness in the shape in which we take and put ourselves together with the weight of the ones before us and the ones who will come again, we become a beautiful wall that sings with the wind, that stands in the rain proud and remains while the rest of it falls apart. And so, praise God, from whom all blessings flow.
when you're pittered and fractured, battered by the elements of life. When the shrill, balkanizing 16th notes of isolation have you down, come home. Come home to our merciful one, always ready with full and body embrace. Amen. Thank you for all the ways you commit. All the ways. And if you've got gifts of the fruit of your labor, there's a offering plate in the back. There's a tab on our website. There's a mailbox slot to receive your check in the mail. Thank you. Next um, Sunday, we will be talking about the vision of the ministry plan for 2022. You'll be receiving that draft ministry plan in the announcements the end of this week. And Joni will share a little bit more to help us understand the new ways we want to be as a congregation, inviting your support of it. This Friday, right out here, we'll have a campfire set up. Come along, bring a beverage or something to eat if you'd like. We'll have a story and some singing from five to seven this Friday, a congregational campfire. And then Saturday morning, starting at nine o'clock, gather here if you're able. We'll have a work day, trying to uh, spruce up the place. We're still looking for you to hit the tab on the announcements where you can add a word so that we can have a wordle of Thanksgiving on our screen in worship next Sunday. One word of gratitude. If you've not, like I've said, had a chance to respond to our invitation to recommit, please do so because our, especially our finance team is really trying to figure out what we can do in terms of that ministry plan. Um, starting next Sunday afternoon, my family and I will be traveling to Ohio to see ex two different portions of our extended family. So Sean is going to be available for care coverage Sunday to Tuesday and Lisa Wednesday through Friday. And lastly, um, when Andrea and I met for our staff meeting this week, she handed me this beautiful um, mycelic mushroomy uh, scrapbook with all of your greetings for my 30th anniversary of ordination. So my deepest gratitude to all of you for your greetings. What a special gift for the opportunity to go on retreat and especially your support of the um, Martin Luther King Jr. Scholarship Fund of the Ministers Conference of Winston-Salem. I think those are the announcements that are critical to us. Um, Andrea will send us forth. Go forth knowing that you are a rhizome of this community, that we couldn't do it without you that God and Spirit have led you here and lead you out into the world and are keeping and sustaining you. Go forth in the confident knowledge that you have found your home. Go forth and adjust peace. Amen.